Breast Cancer Treatment, What Women Need and Want. My name is Laura Ross Paul. I'm not a medical person. I'm an artist and retired academic. But when it comes to breast cancer, I'm a patient pioneer and I can tell you what women need and what women want. I'm lucky to be one of the first women to have my breasts treated by using cryoablation. That procedure, performed by Dr. Peter Littrup in 2003, saved me from a mastectomy. I have been cancer-free now for 13 years. I come from the United States of America, from the beautiful state of Oregon in the Pacific Northwest. My home state is beautiful, full of lush green nature, but Oregon also has the second highest rate of breast cancer in the United States. Why? Like many environments around the world, man-made environmental dangers have contributed to the rise of breast cancer. In the 1970s, Agent Orange was tested in Oregon for us for use in the Vietnam War. The rate of breast cancer then spiked around these testing sites. Our corner of the U.S. also hosts the Hanford Nuclear Waste Storage Facility. A 1970 study determined that radiation leakage from Hanford was getting into our food at dangerously high levels. During this period, my mother developed and died from breast cancer. A good friend of my mother's also had breast cancer at the same time. Her daughter was my close friend, and together we experienced the tragedy of having a mother with breast cancer. When I developed breast cancer in 2003, I was determined not to let it win, not to let it take my breasts nor my life. My determination to avoid a mastectomy led my husband on a search that ultimately resulted in my treatment by Dr. Peter Littrop. As Dr. Littrop's first breast cancer patient, I am grateful for his commitment to this innovative treatment option. During the 13 years since my treatment, my husband and I have maintained a website with information about cryoablation. We also wrote a book with Dr. Littrop called They're Mine and I'm Keeping Them, which is about my cryoablation experience. I'm happy to report that our efforts to spread awareness about cryoablation are having an effect. This past April, a feature article about my story and the preventative protocol I'm about to suggest was written by health writer Charles Moore. It was published on the popular internet site Breast Cancer Weekly Digest. It was their site's most popular article for the month of April. It was reposted over 1,800 times, which led to lots of new connections and networking. One of my new contacts is a nurse practitioner who reached me through our website because she had a patient whose breast cancer had been treated by Dr. Littrop using cryoablation. Ingrid Edstrom uses infrared imaging as a supplement to mammography. She told me that she had never before seen such an amazing return to normal breast tissue after cancer treatment. By sharing awareness of cryoablation over social media with women seeking alternative treatment, my husband and I feel that we have gained a unique insight into what women need and what women want in relation to breast cancer treatment. This insight is what I'd like to share with you today. We feel it can help bring cryoablation to the forefront of breast cancer treatment in the world. We've learned that while women need a cure for cancer, they want that cure to not involve losing their breasts through a mastectomy or disfiguring it with a lumpectomy. While a cure for breast cancer might someday achieve these goals by simply taking a pill, that day has not come yet. In the meantime, cryoablation can put breast cancer in remission, giving women what they need, while not disfiguring a woman's breast, thus giving women what they want. The advantages of cryoablation are many. It is breast conserving, I avoided a mastectomy, 
It has low morbidity. I never needed more than a Tylenol. And it is inexpensive compared to surgery. As a major benefit of cryoblation is that in a significant percentage of cases, cryoblation naturally stimulates the body's immune system to develop an immunity to the cancer as it eats up the dead tumors. In our book, we referenced an early study by Tanaka, a Japanese doctor. He was able to achieve a 47% remission rate for at least five years among a small pool of women with inoperable breast cancer. Tanaka froze their tumors and used no other therapies. Many of you are aware of this miraculous ability of cryoblation to stimulate the immune system. In China, the Chinese began using cryoblation to treat breast cancer about the same time Dr. Littrup treated me in 2003. But the number of women using cryoblation in the U.S. is still low in comparison with an impressive 3,817 women who were treated with cryoblation for breast cancer in the same 13 years at Fuda Hospital in Guangzhou, China. The fact that these tremendous advances in China have not been duplicated in the U.S. is disturbing to me. As activists promoting cryoablation in America, my husband and I have tried to identify why the progress in America is so slow and conceive of a solution to this problem. We believe we have the answer. In America, cryoablation is only seen as an experimental treatment. Because of this, it needs to be statistically proven effective before it's considered a safe alternative to a mastectomy and lumpectomy. FDA trials of cryoablation for breast cancer have been undertaken in the last 13 years, but the size of the trials have been limited due to lack of funding. As a result, the data is considered insufficient to prove that the cryoablation is as safe or effective as surgery. Given this situation, when a U.S. doctor advises treatment for a patient with breast cancer, cryoablation is considered an unproven alternative to statistically proven surgery. Without statistical proof through trials, cryoablation is not used. But if cryoablation isn't used, there are no resulting statistics proving that it works. This conundrum is like a person who can't get a job because they have no experience, yet the only way to get experience is to have a job. This lack of statistical proof has doomed cryoblation in the U.S. to remain experimental. But there might be a new approach which would allow cryoblation to prove itself statistically. Annual mammograms are advised for women over the age of 40 in America. Because of this early, early detection movement, women are often finding something suspicious in their mammogram. Since it is not yet identified as cancer, they are told to wait and see if it develops. But women don't want to wait and do nothing during this six-month wait-and-see period. No, they are ready for action. Women want to do something about this something suspicious. They need an alternative to sitting around and doing nothing for six months, waiting to see if cancer develops. If, at the end of the six-month waiting period, there is no tumor, women breathe a sigh of relief. But if there is cancer, cryoablation is compared to surgery, as mentioned before. American doctors do not advise cryoablation due to its experimental nature, so only surgery is advised. But what if there was a different approach, a relatively benign early treatment, one that women would not fear, one which would make them eager to detect something suspicious as early as possible? Then women would totally embrace early detection. So we suggest a new protocol which accompanies early detection. This protocol would use cryoblation to freeze anything suspicious found by early detection. Why wait for something to manifest as a tumor? 
Why not keep the patient's safety upmost in mind? Why not ablate the unusual tissue, then follow up with more imaging? We have named this the early freeze protocol. Cryoablation can't hurt the breast. It is almost painless and relatively inexpensive. And if something suspicious returns, a doctor can use cryoablation repeatedly until the condition goes away or, despite the cryoablation, proves through biopsy to be cancer. With a cancer diagnosis, a tumor then could be treated by surgery or, hopefully, cryoablation. This is a proactive rather than a reactive strategy in dealing with breast cancer. There is precedence for this kind of pro protocol in treating other precancers. For example, a dermatologist often freezes a small skin tag or lesion discovered during a routine exam. And cryoablation is the current gold standard used by gynecologists to freeze a cervix at the first sign of abnormal cells found on a pap smear. Six months after cryoablation, the pap smear is repeated. Cryoablation is performed, in this case, as a preventative measure. It is used without any diagnosis of cervical cancer, just a suspicious finding. If this new early freeze protocol were used in enough patients, the power of the naturally occurring immune effect stimulated by cry cryoablation will start to show itself. Because of the immune effect, if something suspicious is frozen and it actually is breast cancer, then it's likely that a significant number of those cases will be put into remission. Over time, a large pool of patients will accumulate, demonstrating that women treated through early detection, followed by early freezing, develop significantly less breast cancer than those who simply wait for something suspicious to manifest after early detection. We're convinced that this early freeze protocol will allow cryoablation to accumulate an overwhelming base of evidence that proves its effectiveness. Allowing cryoablation to prove itself in this innocuous and low-cost way eliminates the need to engage in expensive clinical trials attempting to prove that cryoablation is superior or as effective as surgery, although efforts to prove that it is just as effective, if not better, can and should continue on a separate track. There is one other addition to the early freeze protocol we'd like to suggest. We believe that adding infrared thermography as an early imaging tool added to the standard mammography would provide a physician with additional information by showing increased heat in a suspicious area. With this information, a physician would have even greater confidence in the early, that an early freeze is justified. I ask you to consider my thoughts today, to consider the idea of using cryoblation as a cancer preventative, as well as a treatment. My husband and I believe that our proposed early freeze protocol will advance the use of cryoablation for breast cancer much faster in the United States than the current approach. As I leave you with some images inspired by two heroes of my own healing journey, I'd like to say, as a woman who has survived breast cancer and has talked to hundreds of women who have breast cancer, I can tell you honestly, the early freeze protocol is what women need and what women want. Thank you.